So you guys have been leaving a lot of great suggestions on my videos for what I should do in Universe Sandbox 2. And instead of creating a bunch of smaller videos covering them, I just thought, why not pick some of my favorites and put them all together in one big video? So this is Universe Sandbox 2, but the YouTube comments decide what I make. But before we hop in, a quick word from our sponsor, the planet Neptune. Have you ever wanted to not be able to breathe? What about being immediately crushed under the weight of 17 times gravity? Maybe you'd like to freeze to death in a giant cloud of hydrogen. If you said yes to any of these questions, then I have the perfect vacation pack. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. On to the video. Hello everybody, welcome to Universe Sandbox. And today, like I said earlier, we're going to be making whatever the audience tells me to make. So first off, we got an overrunner with maybe, make the Earth roughly Jupiter sized and also put scaled down versions of the planets around it. Like if the real Jupiter can have dozens of moons, then this can work. I'm imagining I'm gonna make a Jupiter-centric model. Just because Jupiter is the biggest planet and has the most mass, everything can orbit it. Okay, here we are in an empty simulation. I'm gonna get myself a Jupiter, boom, Jupiter, and then I'm gonna get myself a copy of every single planet and try to put them in some sort of a orbit around Jupiter. Should I put Jupiter itself around Jupiter? That'd be weird. No, let's just go with Saturn. Um, I'm gonna make it smaller though, kind of like the comment suggested, just scale them down after I get them all into place. Um, I think probably everything until Mars is fine, but Saturn is way too big for this. That looks more stable. This looks like a somewhat respectable orbit, but I'm making it farther away for sure. This looks all right, but I'm just gonna pop down a safety save because this stuff never works first try. Let's see if this works. So with only changing the, the size of Uranus, Neptune, and Saturn, we have ourselves a Jupiter-centric solar system, which I think is what he wanted. If I misread your comment, I apologize. In fact, if I misread anybody's comment, I apologize. And I wonder what happens if I put the sun into this equation. I can't imagine anything good. Uh, hmm, that kind of worked. Oh, it didn't. Oh uh, yeah, that was all the that was the calamity I was expecting. Hey, we still got Jupiter and Mercury though. Apart from all the other explosions, that seems to be doing fine. Jupiter is out of here, man. Okay, well I did what you wanted. The sun didn't work, but you know what are you gonna do? Crazy idea: terraform the Earth. Okay, I can do that. Okay, let's come down here, grab an Earth. Oh wow, it's terraformed. That was easy. Helioform the Earth. That's kind of interesting. I assume this to mean that we're gonna change the Earth into a sun. Now from memory here, I believe that the sun is entirely hydrogen and something else. No iron, no argon, no oxygen, sorry everybody breathing, no carbon dioxide, no water, no nitrogen. Okay, so we've now just got silicate. If I go to composition, show all these layers, and then I add in, oh, I think it's helium and hydrogen. I should look this up. 74% hydrogen and 23% helium. Helium and then hydrogens, we've got, hydrogens is the 0.07s. I'm gonna go 70-30 just to try to get like 100%-ish. So this is the sun's composition. If I press play right now, we made a gas giant. That's kind of a start, honestly. So how do I make it do fusion? I need me some fusion. I could probably raise this average temperature until we did fusion. That's an idea. I don't know if it's a good one. Maybe there's like a heat laser or something, or like a fun way to do this. There is a laser. Maybe I can just like laser it. <laughs> I'm gonna need a bigger laser though, that's for sure. Interstellar powerful continuous laser. This looks like a good laser. We're gonna raise up this power. Crank it up and give me some heat. Oh, yeah, let's give me some more power too. 10 megawatts. This looks like this is doing basically nothing. Hot magic, that sounds like the thing that I need. And this laser sucks though. Preset, Galactic Empire Super Laser. Oh, <laughs> oh. Um, is there any Earth left? And who would have thought that the Galactic Empire Super Laser would have blown up my planet? Who could have predicted that, honestly? I'm gonna go to the overview and look at the heat and maybe just see if this raises it all while I'm blasting it. This is doing approximately nothing. Why is this not heating anything though? <laughs> I feel ridiculous doing this. Well, I tried it the nice way. Now I'll try it the hard way. We need some freaking heat in here. Oh, oh that looks sun-like. You think we're fusioning? We're not quite fusioning. We don't have enough heat. Make it hotter. I see heat dropping again. Yeah, ideally a sun wouldn't cool down. 
That's not what suns do typically. I don't think we have any fusion going on. Maybe it just wasn't hot enough. It's not heating. Now I do remember from a video that I made that the mass of the sun needs to be 0 0.08 solar masses in order to be big enough to do fusion. So here we are. Um, oh, it just needed to be a little bit bigger, that's all. Why is it expanding so rapidly though? Why is this number going up? Okay, how many suns we got? 0 0.08, yeah, there it is. Our solar earth helioformed. What else we got? A guy who loves to travel says, an earth that orbits the earth. I can do that. Let's get our sun right here. Let's take the earth and put it one astronomical unit away. Perfect ish almost perfect way is that 0.1 or 1.0 yeah i think that was 0.1 au we need one au way out of here yeah just like that and i add another earth around the earth roughly like that and i do need to take this mass and lower it it's just too big but check this out right here yeah like a 33 percent earth next to the other earth earth 2.0 beautiful looks good though what else we got? What else we got in the pipeline here? Make a galaxy, but only with Earths. I'll try. I don't know how possible that one is. Get ourselves a random spiral galaxy. Just change all of the nebulae to Earths. Can I actually see stars if I get really close into a galaxy? No. I could just see nebula. Okay, well that's not gonna work. But I'm not one to give up that easily. So what's probably at the center of every galaxy? Well, that is a supermassive black hole, of course. Okay, here's our supermassive black hole. All I need to do is just make a little galaxy around it, right? Put a bunch of Earths out here. I'm sure the Universe Sandbox absolutely loves this. <laughs> what could go wrong? So what are the chances that everything just orbits how it should? Uh, I'm going to give it a pretty low likelihood. And also, I'm sorry if you can hear Furious clicking. It do be like that sometimes. Well, I'm not quite done yet. A few more Earths just to really round out this galaxy, you know? You think this is enough Earths? <laughs> I certainly hope so. Okay. Now all that's left to do is hit play and see what happens. Oh, I gotta slow down time a little bit, though. You think they're all just gonna orbit in a nice, beautiful little spiral shape? My guess is no. Oh. Something got shot out. This looks crazy. Let's slow it down and just kind of check it out from inside. This is so ridiculously easy to make, but it's also like one of the coolest things I've made. I like, that was a good idea. Hopefully I did it like you uh, intended I do it. Can you make the environment of Proxima Centauri B? Okay, now to make Proxima Centauri B the environment of it, I need the Proxima Centauri B star right here, and I need a random rocky planet. I'm going to be putting it 0 0.025 away from Proxima Centauri, so if you don't know, one astronomical unit is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Now Proxima Centauri b is a lot smaller than the Sun, so its habitable zone is a lot closer. That's why 0 0.025 can be within the habitable range for Proxima Centauri b. How am I supposed to make the environment of something that we don't even know about? In my imagination, Proxima Centauri b is reddish. Yeah, I'd imagine it'd be reddish because its star is a red dwarf. That'll work. It's tidally locked to its star, so let's tidally lock it. Boom, tidally locked. Okay, and I also think that the orbital period of Proxima Centauri b is really short. I think it's like four something days. I'm gonna research this and see though. I don't wanna say the wrong thing, even though I probably have and also do say the wrong thing all the time. 11 days, okay, I shouldn't have put it at four days because apparently it's 11. The consensus is 11 days. So this thing should be absolutely freaking flying now. Can you imagine a year passing every 11 days? That would be wild. You're just f like hauling ass through space. Now the mass and radius of Proxima Centauri b, I've got to figure out what they are. The radius should be 0 0.094 to 1.04. And let's find the mass, see what it's supposed to be mass wise. Or it's a little bit heavier than our Earth according to Wikipedia, so we'll go 1.07 Earths. Yes, it is. Okay, and then the temperature of Proxima b says it's going to be about 234 Kelvin. Okay, and what else I can see is that if it does have an atmosphere, its atmosphere will be mostly com comprised of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Yeah, maybe like this amount. This is looking a little bit too Earth-like for me, so I'm going to go to the atmosphere and I'm going to change the opacity. Something a little bit more red. This looks like more of what I picture in my head whenever I see 
uh, Proxima B. Yeah, I feel like this is a fairly accurate representation. So there it is. This is my rendition of Proxima Centauri B. I think it looks pretty cool. Okay, someone wants me to make a rocky planet with the style of a gas giant. Okay, so to start off with, let's add a random known star. Okay, here's Regal. And then let's add ourselves a random rocky planet, kind of far away, maybe like 15 AU, is that too far? Oh, that is nowhere near far enough. Yeah, this looks like a giant spear of soap. I'm definitely down for that. So gas giants, just like the sun, have hydrogen and helium inside of them. Okay, make sure there's still a surface under there. There is. And let's take this opacity and lower it just a little kind of smaller amount, just so you know that it's still a rocky world underneath. Maybe like that amount. This looks pretty good. And I'm gonna change the clouds to be something, something weird. Yeah, I'm trying to go for like a Neptune sort of vibe here. So if we do this, I like it. Yeah. So this is a rocky world that we can land on, but it kind of looks like Neptune from a distance. Like if you squint your eyes and just pretend you're looking at Neptune, that's definitely Neptune-ish. Yeah, it looks weird as hell over here. It's kind of cool though. I want you to make a video about what would happen if the black hole in the middle of the galaxy replaced our sun. So let's open up a solar system, take our sun, delete it, and then add in Sagittarius A right in the middle of our solar system. So if you wanted to see what would happen if we replaced the sun with Sagittarius A, I'm gonna turn these orbits on just so you can see easier what's about to happen here. I'm gonna hit play and we'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> nothing's left, <laughs> that's what happens. And I'll slow down the speed here so you can see what happens a little bit clearer. But yeah, Mercury gets sucked up, Venus, Earth, Mars, and everything just gets pulled in. If I put, let's say, Saturn around Sagittarius A, like this, it will orbit. I kind of wonder if just putting, just replacing the sun with a black hole immediately um, stops all the, all the velocity or the speed of the planets. I'm not really sure, but I'm sure someone else can explain it in the, in the comments. Idea, can you make a custom system? Yeah, I sure can. I've never done that before, so that'd actually be kind of fun. I've modeled other systems, but I've never actually made my own. I've been thinking about this, and I want to go with Stevenson 218. Stevenson 218 is the largest star in our observable universe that we've seen. There's probably bigger ones out there, but this is just the biggest that we know about. And for comparison, Stevenson 218 versus our sun, just a little speck. So if we're going to make a system around Stevenson 218, our habitable zone is going to be way out here. Just like the opposite with Proxima b, where we had to put it like really close to the sun, this is just the exact opposite. It's like really far away from, from Stevenson 218. Let's find ourselves a exoplanet, maybe a rocky one. One AU, one astronomical unit from Stevenson 218 is actually inside of the sun. It's mind blowing how big this star is. But let's take ourselves a random rocky planet and put it around, I would say like 363 astronomical units. That seems like a good place. So in our solar system, everything's named after Roman gods. So in my solar system, everything's gonna be named after uh, Norse gods. So this will be hell. So let's get another star and put it in orbit around Stevenson 218. I think that this will be fine. Just because Stevenson 218 is so massive, I don't think it'll matter. Uh, and then the sun's name will be, well it has to be Odin, right? That's the, that's the, that's the king of all the gods. So in North mythology, Odin's wife is named Frigg, so I think it'd be cool to have them together. Every good solar system needs a habitable planet, right? So let's have like two, like two habitable planets, that'd be cool. It'd give us somewhere to go. This one will be called Freya, just because, you know, it's the goddess of like fertility and all that, so there's Freya. And I like ocean worlds, so this one's gonna be an ocean world, and I have to look up the god for the sea in Norse mythology, and this one's going to be named Nord. This is the god of the sea. I Hopefully these people never develop a space program that live on one of these two planets, because they could never make it out here. <laughs> I mean, they could. It would take a long time, though. What, what gods am I missing here? I don't see a lot of, like, really dark planets like this. I'm gonna name this one Loki. I think that's a cool name for one. It's way too close. I'm putting it back here. That's a little too far away. Let's go back right here. That looks good. And we need one more. Maybe we need like a little dwarf planet. We'll put one of these way out here. 
and we'll name it something cool. We'll name this one Thor, and then we'll map it after Mars. I like that. That looks like war to me. And let's make it bigger to just like seven Earths. Yeah, okay, cool. Something else that I noticed too is around Stevenson 218, the habitable zone is so far away. Let me find the distance here. Yes, 1,444 astronomical units away. So if you were living in this system that I've created, then your year would take 8,762 years to go around the sun one time. Basically all of human history in the time it takes to circle the sun one time. I think that's so crazy how big these stars get. So I've got the time scale up to 1,000 years a second, and we'll just see how long it takes for us to get like one orbit. It's taken a real long time. I don't need, if you live in this planet, I have no idea how you would like try to like track how old you are. <laughs> it would be difficult. Just make up some like arbitrary number like, yeah, well like 500 days is a year. Idea, you should play Subnautica. The game is basically about surviving on an exoplanet that's fully covered in water. Okay, Subnautic. I guess, I guess the first one? Subnautica, okay. $29.99, oh my gosh. I gotta bust out my mom's credit card for this. While this is installing, I have some time to think and I just realized I spent $30 on a YouTube video. How on earth am I going to explain this? <laughs> Please hit that sub button. Okay, so here we are in the world of Subnautica. I literally know nothing about this video game. You wanted me to try it, so I'll try it. But I won't promise I'll be good at it. Okay, climb ladder. I can do that. Whoa. This actually looks really cool. I like the graphics of this a lot. Uh, this looks really cool. Is, whoa, is that like a planet? Am I on a moon right now? Our ship looks awesome. The graphics look really good. I feel like I'm actually kind of on the beach right now. Oh, this looks cool. Break limestone. What's this? I can go inside of these tubes? This looks really beautiful, actually. Is there, there's no cargo? I guess it's just an empty cargo box. A gaming chair? Nice. I actually need one of those. Why would there be all this stuff if I couldn't collect it? I feel like I'm about to get roasted. Oh, I need to breathe. Breathing is kind of important. What's down here? A fish? Can I have this fish? I cannot. Can I have this fish? I can't. Boomerang fish. And I gotta say the graphics in this game are awesome. They're so distracting that I actually forget to breathe. Oh, I might actually just die right here? No, I'm good. There's something. Maybe I need something else to collect that. That would kind of make sense. Whoa, it gets deep over here. I'm gonna need that. Oh my god, I keep forgetting to breathe. <laughs> I know I keep saying it, but man, this looks amazing. Radiation detected? Oh. I guess that kind of makes sense. Yeah, maybe that means I'm not supposed to go there yet. Maybe there's some sort of like unlockable radiation suit or something I'm supposed to get. Oh, I'm gonna need that though, what is this? There's so many things that I just like can't pick up for some reason. What are these? Acid mushrooms? Oh, yeah. Don't threaten me with a good time. Is it just me or does like everyone almost die in this game? I didn't learn my lesson. I'm immediately swimming to the bottom of the ocean again. I can't learn my lesson. There's no way I'm making it up this time, boys. Yep, this looks like the end for me. That didn't last very long, did it? Oh, I'm not dead? Oh, I, I did die. Sorry for not playing Subnautica that long, but honestly, this video is about Universe Sandbox 2 and not really about Subnautica, but if you want me to play more Subnautica, make sure to let me know down in the comments, and also, if you want a part 2 to this video, make sure to leave a comment about what I should do next. Hit that like button if you liked it, hit that dislike button if you hated it, and if you're not done watching my comment, make sure to hit this video over here in the corner. YouTube thinks that you'll like it. But that's all for me. Bye for now.